Hey guys, it's Bro Uwak, and Competitive Season 9 in Overwatch 2 has brought us a new way of how we interact with the game, with how we think about the game. See, beforehand in Season 1 through 8, it was all about healing, 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 healing the tank, healing the DPS, but now it's all about damage and just getting kills. So that's why in today's video, I want to talk about six total heroes, two tanks, two DPS, and two support heroes that are some of the best to play in competitive right now that are surely going to get nerfed either the next couple days or at least in the next week. But one of these heroes for sure is gonna get nerfed but you want to spam in every single one of your support games and that's Zenyatta. Now I won't spend too much time talking about Zenyatta because I already made a whole separate video talking about why he's so good. Basically me riding or should I say ball riding Zenyatta and just the benefits that you get from him. The increase of projectile size, the discord orb paired up with the 20% healing reduction with damaged heroes, your health pool regenerating double the speed compared to other support heroes. Really there is so much good going for Zenyatta that while you yourself are good as an individual hero you also uplift the rest of your teammates just by simply playing this Omnic boy. But nobody benefits more with a Zenyatta on the field than the first DPS hero that I feel like could be played at any single level and played by anybody even if you never played a DPS hero before. That's Soldier 76. Now aside from Soldier being an easy hero to learn and an easier hero to master another reason why I like Soldier in Season 9 specifically is because you're able to essentially tag the enemy team. And what I mean by that is you're able to shoot just one single bullet into an enemy hero and start a two second timer of 20% healing reduction. Then you shoot another bullet and then start that two second timer over again. Then another bullet. Just do that over and over and essentially a 20% permanent damage reduction compared to someone like Hanzo or Mei or these slow projectile heroes that don't have a consistent damage output. And so what this is going to allow you to do is overpower the pocket mercy, overpower the pocket more or an Ana that is trying to heal up their tank or damage heroes because well you have more damage output than say compared to some of these other damage heroes and paired up with a discord orb any tank is going to get shredded you are a tank buster as soldier 76 a Winston a diva Arissa Ramacha anybody it's just on your shoulders to shred through that tank you are the tank buster and you are the damage machine essentially when you pick soldier you're telling the team yeah I'm going to be the one with the most damage and the most kills, other than maybe Zenyatta. <laughs> Not to mention you have a self-healing ability that if you have, say, someone like a Zenyatta and a Lucio on your team, you're not going to be getting a lot of heals, but it doesn't matter because it's not like you need a lot of heals with Soldier. And so all that healing output can go towards your tank or other damage hero. So that's why I really like the Soldier pick. He's just an all-around good hero. Is he the best hero? I would say there's better heroes, but for just a consistent hero to play in your day-to-day -day games, Soldier is your guy to pick. But for the second damage hero, this is somebody that not only can counter Zenyatta, but also can just hold their own in Season 9, and this is the cover art girl for Overwatch, if you don't count Kriko, and that's Tracer. I don't think there's ever really been a time, maybe besides in Goats, where Tracer was not a good pick. Now, unlike Soldier 76, Tracer is a lot harder to learn and a lot harder to master because, well, you gotta have great aim, but more importantly, you gotta have good map knowledge, knowing where to put yourself as Tracer so that you can get access to the health packs and just being able to flank the enemy back line and, and you know there's nothing that I can really say about Tracer that hasn't already been told before and how to play her and why she's good but I will repeat what I said in the Zenyatta video or another reason why Tracer is so good is well three reasons actually one she can counter the Zenyatta now you do got to keep your space and distance between you and the Omnic boy so that he doesn't kick you in the face uh, but you are the specific hero that counters him and if Zenyatta is shredding through your tank well it's your job to take him out the second reason why she's so good is similar to Soldier, where she's able to tag the enemy team. Just takes one bullet to start the 20% healing reduction for two seconds. And with Tracer and Soldier, it's basically going to be a permanent healing reduction. Uh, but the third reason is that you also have an increase in health. Now, everybody essentially got an additional 50 health, but Tracer specifically, I think, benefited the most because she was always this fragile little girl. So being able to have that 50 extra health really beefs her up to be able to survive in the enemy back line and distract them. That's essentially just what you do. Just be a distraction so that your tank doesn't get all the focus on him it kind of subsides the focus to you uh, but you're smart and you're not bad and you're not gonna die because you know when to go get the health and know when to go and die the enemy back line but now let's move on to the best tank what? 
that sound. Wait a minute, bro. You're not gonna be saying Widowmaker is also a good DPS hero to bring out. And yeah, kind of. Okay, Widowmaker is probably the best situational hero to bring out. As long as they don't have counter dive heroes like a Winston or a D.Va or a Genji and Tracer or a Backline Assassin, Sombra. And if as long as you're on long range maps like a Junker Town or Havana. Well, why am I saying Widowmaker is good again? Oh, yeah, that's right. The projectile size increase benefited Widowmaker heavily, meaning that's a lot easier to hit your shots on Widowmaker. Plus, being that you are the only hero that's able to get one shot headshots anymore because Hanzo no longer can and Mercy with Ash isn't really a thing in Season 9, you can get so many insta kills and especially on a Zenyatta where you beat a Zenyatta 10 times out of 10, you just gotta be good. Widowmaker is the best situational hero. Remember that, situational. While Tracer and Soldier is good in every single game, Widowmaker only on certain maps and only against certain compositions you wanna pull out the Widow. But now let's finally talk about the best tank heroes to play in Season 9 and if you're not trying to counter anybody and just trying to play some tank, Arisa is a great hero to ruin everybody's fun because Arisa just does not die. <laughs> so your job as a tank is to obviously hold your ground and protect the team and for a hero like Sigma or Reinhardt that could definitely hold true. Arisa on the other hand, while she definitely can hold her ground, protecting the team not really in her contract that much but what she can do that these other tanks can't do is have a consistent amount of damage output and paired up with a discord orb and whenever your damage hero activates the 20% healing reduction that is your cue to go be aggressive and get some of these kills remember season nine it's all about damage and it's all about getting kills no longer is it just about sustainability and waiting for your ultimate you gotta go and get kills now just wait for the discord orb to get off of you because that's that's the biggest problem with Arisa is compared to these shield tanks you're gonna get discorded a lot but all you gotta do is wait for the discord orb to get off of you and then you have like what eight seconds in between for you to be aggressive before the discord orb is gonna get reapplied to you that's all you gotta do with Arisa be a little patient wait for discord to get off and then go kill the Zenyatta <laughs> Arisa she has so much sustainability and so much survivability in the game which is kind of what you need as a tank right now but also killing potential but the other tank that you can play that if Zenyatta is giving you so much trouble and you're willing to coordinate with your team Winston is an excellent tank to play in that situation he's just there to put pressure on the Zenyatta because the thing about Winston's bubble is that or any shield for that that matter is that once you place it down Zenyatta cannot apply a discord orb through the enemy shield so that means that you yourself as Winston is going to be protected but more importantly your team's also going to be protected and if you're protected that means you could just go and attack the Zenyatta put pressure on him and force him off of Zenyatta hopefully plus even if you do get discorded you have a jump ability that can get you to safety into your back line the discord orb is going to get off of you then you can just jump right back in as long as you have your bubble and that's just really the key make sure you're jumping that you have your bubble because that's really your only safety net especially against the Zenyatta who's gonna discord you kick you shoot you in the face like, like Zenyatta can really outlive a diving Winston Zenyatta's just so good right now but Winston he can hold his own in the Zenyatta meta and now finally the best support here to play in season 9 it's Zenyatta all right bye guys all right obviously that's a joke we all know Zenyatta is the best support here to play but Lucio is also a decent support here to play if you for some reason don't want to play Zenyatta now it's gonna be a tough game if you play both a Lucio and a Zenyatta you still want to try to have a main healer like an Ana or even a Mora, especially if they have someone like a Genji who I've been seeing a lot lately, but Lucio is somebody that can surprisingly be super aggro and not die. In Season 9, Lucio did get a massive buff not only to his health pool, but also his boop ability, increasing the range at which you boop an enemy, and then also increasing the damage and the lockout movement. Boop is a way better ability, but on top of that, similar to Zenyatta, Lucio also got a projectile size buff as well, which means that your sound wave thing is your primary from a fire is gonna be landing a lot more often like when I'm playing Lucio I just feel like an unstoppable DPS machine and that's also another reason why Lucio is actually pretty good in season 9 is that you don't really have to focus that much on healing and I know that sounds wild because well that's what supports have always done for like seven plus years is heal the team but in season 9 there's less of an emphasis on that and more of an emphasis on just killing and Lucio he won't be dying because he has the wall ride ability it's gonna be a lot harder to kill him so you can really just focus on speed boosting and killing it's kind of crazy but great now don't go full red Lucio and ignore your team because you still gotta go back and peel and help your team out especially if someone's flanking you gotta turn on the heal song but if you want to be a red at Lucio don't tell reddit but you kind of can but as always the final best support here to play in season 9 is Zenyatta Zenyatta like I mentioned before in my dedicated video he just lands so many shots so easy and the discord or 
Zora paired up with your damage heroes. It's just a deadly combination. It's kind of unfair how good Zenyatta is, and I would not be surprised if they nerf Zenyatta come this Tuesday, or more than likely next week. But at least for these next couple of days, you can spam Zenyatta and spam a lot of these heroes and do really well in Season 9. But until they nerf uh, probably most of these heroes, good luck in Season 9, and I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching more Overwatch 2 videos to come, and bye.